Ladies and gentlemen, we are so honored to have in our studio with us today Nora O'Donnell, the managing editor and anchor for the CBS Evening News. Nora, I'm so happy to see you. I haven't seen you since 2019, yes. face to face, and here you are. So, so tell us, are you working on some special projects here in Los Angeles? We are, well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here <laughs> in LA, in the wonderful state of California. We are, we're working on a number of special projects. Um, you know, LAX, the, one of the busiest airports <laughs> in the world, yes. and one of the biggest stories right now globally is the supply chain issue, mm -hmm. and certainly holiday shipping. Well, guess what? FedEx is set to deliver 100 million more packages this year than in 2019. Wow. E-commerce is booming. How is that affecting workers across America, the people that work at LAX? Well, guess what? We went there in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm oh, still paying no. for it. With know, all like, the construction? <laughs> well, well, all of the work. I mean, they have a shift that goes through the night. Uh, at LAX, they, they process 240,000 packages a day. Man. Essentially, we went inside Santa's sleigh or Santa's <laughs> workshop and met all the elves who are making sure all the packages uh, get to your home or your, or your family's home just in time for the holidays. And I think it's just part of the story of us trying to unveil and look at parts of America that many people don't see. We got that rare access. And so you'll see just these great workers you know, at LAX who are working so hard around the clock to make sure the holidays uh, happen you know, in time and everybody gets their gifts in time. Well, that's going to make all of us feel really good out here on the West Coast. Yeah, well, I, I joked to the guys there, though. I said, is this another one of Gail King's packages to her new right. grandson out here in L.A.? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how many? It's probably just a truck, you know, just for her grandson. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. well, they're going to get there on time. Yes, absolutely. Let me ask you about um, 2022, just in terms of... Uh, new initiatives, because we talk about that whenever we chat for year to year, what can we expect to see in 2022 that, that that's different or that you have on tap? I know it's incredible to think a new year is approaching yeah. us. Always an opportunity to restart, to reevaluate. Um, but at the CBS Evening News, we're just gonna double down on what is working well. Investigative reporting, original storytelling, great storytelling, and the types of stories that I think you've seen more and more of. In other words, profiling these workers at LAX who work so hard, what they do. We went this year uh, in Baltimore, Maryland, to a truck driving company. I learned, I got behind the wheel and learned how to drive an 18 wheeler. I only knocked down a couple of cones, <laughs> but didn't hurt anybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you know, but that was a story about why people want to be truckers. Good pay. People mm -hmm. who were making $15 an hour can now make $24, $25 an hour. And more women. More women. <laughs> and why they want that job, the flexibility involved. Um, so that was a story we did. We went to a turkey farm, you know, went out with farmers <laughs> right before Thanksgiving. What's going on when we're talking about this supply chain issue? So those types of the stories are the ones that we're going to focus on. Then, of course, the investigative reporting that we've done. As you know, we've spent a lot of time on reporting about Sexual assault, I was gonna bring that sexual up. harassment in the, in the military, mm -hmm. also domestic abuse mm -hmm. in the military. And right now, Congress is exploring that very idea because the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, has said he wants to bring change. He wants to have a more independent body look at how um, sexual abuse and harassment is handled in the military. And we feel like we've been pushing yes, that you change have. with our reporting. Really love the spotlight that uh, you've been shining. And of course, your feature in uh, Parade Magazine oh, in you. terms of the military and Veterans Day. So. Really, obviously, they're paying attention to the work that you're doing. Yeah, and at the same time that we're, we're shining a spotlight on what's not working, you know, in the military, mm -hmm. we do ha continue our series called Profiles in Service, where we're talking about all the great things that are happening in the military. I don't know if you noticed, but at West Point this year, they had four cadets that won the Rhodes Scholarship. All four of them women. were women. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you knew, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. So, you know, a lot of that reporting continues. Mm -hmm. Well, Nora, I'm going to bring back 2019 again, because that's when you took the chair at CBS Evening News and you became managing editor. Fast forward just a few months later, you were leading coverage for a historic pandemic, historic social protests, an insurrection at the White House, the likes that we have never, or the Capitol oh, that yeah. we have never seen before. I was going to ask you, before I pose that particular question, what have you learned since being in the chair? But my God. I know. 
we've all learned a lot the past couple of years. Yeah, the broadcast is out of Washington, D.C. We said we wanted to be where a lot of the big decisions are made. It turned out we did. There were those impeachments, the mm. insurrection, the pandemic, the response or lack of response yes. to the pandemic in the early days. And so we were right there on the scene as many Americans returned to watching broadcast news for the trusted source. Uh, that we are. And I think that in many ways, journalism not just became a public service as we've always been, we became a public health service, For imparting sure. to everyone the news they wanted to know. How is coronavirus? Right. You know, was it on the surface? Was it through the air? I mean, today we still continue answering a lot of these mm -hmm. questions as now we're on the next variant, the Omicron variant. Um, so it really just an incredible year reporting on the pandemic, you know. Um, we were in the office every day. We did yes. not work from home. Some of, um, in order to stay safe, some people were able to work from home, but we've continued to, you know, try and give everybody the latest and best information that we can give them and do the reporting, fact check it as best that we can, you know, so that people have the accurate information so they can make the best decision for themselves and their families. Actually, we've you've reported on the change of not just life as we know it, but certainly the workforce as mm -hmm. we know it. We talked about, about us coming into the studio every day, but a lot of people are still working from home. So now there's, there's that whole change in how we do business. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting as we continue to explore that because some people can work successfully and work from home. Um, a lot of working class people, that's not an issue for them. You know, Can't if you're it. in healthcare, if you're a doctor or a nurse and work in a hospital, transportation, if you're at a grocery store. Um, so there are many businesses where working from home is not a, an option for them. And many of them, of course, um, were there when the virus, when we didn't have the vaccine. And I think we owe them a big pat on the back for, for being there for all of us. For the still that, working. That showed up you know, every day and had to work in those fields. Um, so we're grateful to them. And now the vaccine is out there. And I think the story we're going to continue to cover is, you know, why do people still, why are there still such a large section of Americans who don't feel that the vaccine is safe? Where are they getting that misinformation from? Because, and holding on to it. And then holding on to it. So, um, gosh, so much has changed. But I do feel like we're finally bending the curve. You know, uh, Nora, being managing editor of the CBS Evening News, lofty, lofty um, title, but you're also managing three children. <laughs> I have to bring that up. Which one's harder? Okay, <laughs> exactly, yeah. but how do you manage? And let's even talk about the pandemic, because I know you have the same issues as everybody else who had children in school. Mm -hmm. So for you to work, to inform us and the public, and then also make sure that your kids are being educated and getting what they need. Right. My, that wasn't easy. It was not easy. You're right. My three most important titles, mom, wife, and managing editor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many parents struggled um, for the past couple of years having kids at home. You know, I think we all worried about our kids, our grandkids. Um, you know, I think they showed a lot of endurance, you yeah. know, uh, but I think it was really hard for kids. We just saw the Surgeon General reporting um, Vivek Murthy that there is a mental health crisis among teens and children in America, and that is in part because of what's happened. And I know so it's scary. Depression. So much depression, and it's really scary. We've seen, of course, drug overdoses skyrocket. Um, so a lot to be concerned about. You know, I, I feel blessed. I think we've hopefully made it through. I'm grateful to the teachers who now have them back, you know, in the classroom. But I know, I mean, I feel parents' pain, you know, and people who had to work from home and babysit their kids at the same time and deal with Zoom issues. I mean, yes. I mean, thankfully, CBS helped me with my Wi-Fi in my house, and we still had problems, you know. <laughs> Everybody did. Everybody had Wi-Fi. Everybody wifi. was on Wi-Fi. I know. Everybody, everybody was, needed it. I know. So, um, and we we're fortunate to be able to have Wi-Fi. Many families did, did not have access to broadband, which will be expanded under the president's new uh, infrastructure, you know, plan. So, um, but, you know, I just put my foot in front of the other and try and do a great job every, do and, every day. And luckily, my husband's been very supportive. Well, you know what? That's just so wonderful to hear you talk about that, because that's probably why people connect with you so much, because they were going through the same situation, not different yeah. obviously, in terms of you talking about the Wi-Fi and all of that, but yeah. they still can identify, yeah, I had that issue too. I still had to take care of my kids or I couldn't take them to school because they couldn't go to school. And for those who went to work, they, they went to work. And even those who stayed at home all day, that's Well, still I think that's why there's been so many mental health challenges. I think the stress and pressure is unlike anything we've ever seen. No question. You know, I, I mean, agree. it was almost like a wartime. Um, you know, here we were fighting a virus, an invisible virus, right? 
and then people were confined to their homes. People were sick. People had loved ones, um, you know, who died. And so um, I think it's been a really tough couple of years for everybody. And I hope that, you know, we've each found new coping mechanisms, you know, for myself and my husband. It was trying to take a walk every day. Yes. You know, take the kids to school and go How for a walk. How was that? You know, we put it on our Instagram, but just get outside. You know, sometimes Fresh we had air. the long route, then we had the short route, you know, <laughs> from when we had to get going really early. You know, try to find opportunities for us to at least take a break from the pressures of life every day. And that was a walk. And, you know, walking amazingly can not only be, you know, good for your physical health, but your mental health. And it took, I don't want to say that it took that, but still, that. Like kind of basic, yeah. but honestly did us a lot of, made us feel, okay. you know, that was kind of our saving grace, if you will. I'm going to ask you one more thing. There's so many things that we could talk about. I know you have your holiday traditions. Are you still pay, playing golf? I am still playing okay. golf, yeah. I know she's a good golfer, but I want to give you some kudos too, uh, Nora. I was talking about your year since 2019 and how you led us through all of these, these um, tumultuous times, but you've been lauded for your work. The National Press Foundation has awarded you the excellence in broadcast yeah. journalism. Thank you. Kudos. Thank Congratulations. You. What does that mean to you? Well, I, you know, look, I, it's an entire, it's a tribute really to the entire CBS Evening News team because, you know, I sit there at the desk, but there's a whole team of people. And I think, you know, for our viewers, there are so many people that work hard to put that broadcast on every night. You know, you see the correspondents out sure. in the field, the, you know, the editors, the crew, the producers, the writers. I mean, it takes a team, Pat, you know, too. And so um, I'm just glad that the broadcast is being recognized for, for excellence in journalism. Um, you know, Walter Cronkite held that chair, of course, yes. for two decades, we was known as the it. most trusted man in America. And I've said, I want to be known as the most trusted woman in America. And Cronkite said something, which is that journalism is what we need to make democracy work. I believe that. I believe we need an informed electorate, right? More so than ever. Absolutely. People need to know that what they watch uh, on our broadcast is trusted news, independent news, objective news, that it's fair. And we work so hard to do that every single night. Are we perfect? Nobody's perfect. But we're trying to get as close to delivering the most trusted broadcast in America. And that's the goal we strive for. And so for all of us to be recognized by the National Press Foundation is, is um, feels pretty good after a couple of tough years. Good. And we are proud to acknowledge that and proud to have you leading our broadcast. Should I announce our new show that's going to be uh, launched soon on uh, Paramount Plus? Sure. <laughs> Why not? I call, it, I call it Cocktails with Pat because we always See, talk on Mondays. Mondays and Monday Happy Cocktails Hour with Monday. Pat. Happy Hour Monday. You just heard it here, folks. Why not, Nora? <laughs> yes. Girl, and in I our, love you. <laughs> I know. And in our red and blue, I mean, we could be running for president. Yes, you know? we could. This is America. <laughs> that's the next big announcement. So... <laughs> We have much more to talk about, and you'll, you'll be seeing more of Nora O'Donnell. Make sure to watch her broadcast every evening at 6.30. And if we tell you about a show, we'll give you more information about that. <laughs> Nora, what a pleasure. Oh, my gosh, thank you. I could have talked to you for an hour. I know. Or more. You know, know that, right? Oh, likewise. Likewise. <laughs> They're like, okay, 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 wrap. That's a wrap. Come on, come on, come on. You are just so easy to talk to. Oh, thank you. Likewise. No, seriously. Thank you.